Hey, it's Voice Over Body Shop on Monday, and our guest tonight is Scott Parkin. Thank you. All <laughs> Thanks right. for fading the music down. Yeah, yeah, really. Where's your, uh, your, yeah. your glass? I brought the Star Wars glasses. He chose Tatooine, the Ice Planet oh, Hoth, hot. and I have the... It's cold enough here in Southern California. It is cold enough. Yummy juice. You're yes, welcome. That is correct. Yes, anyway. Age 12 years. Yes, but if you got a question for Scott, uh, throw it in the chat Yeah, please room, do. And uh, he'll get to answer it. But we're going to talk about that, and we've got tech a little bit later on. And I'm uh, stoked for the tech. It's about the new Apogee, right? We're going to talk about that. All right. And a lot more stuff. All right. Lots of stuff coming up on Voice Over Body Shop right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place, George Whittem. The home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Everybody watches the show regularly based on the audience reaction. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have some fun tonight. Not that we don't always have fun when we do this show, but tonight we've got Scott Parkin with us, and uh, we're he, he's a master of ad lib. I unlike mean, you. Un un tonight. Unlike me, yes. He's ah. reading that right now. Yes, it's like, what is that? Okay, anyway. Uh, so, and which is an important part of voiceover. So, we'll be talking about Especially, that tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if, again, if you got questions for him, throw them in the chat room so we can ask him those questions. Of course, yeah. I have a pile of great questions for him. So, we'll, Good. we'll see how that goes. You did your homework. I always do my homework. Anyway, uh, also, some tech stuff we'll be talking about later on, mm -hmm. some NAM video. All this great stuff on our live show, so stay tuned. But first, we need to introduce our guest. But maybe it'd be better if he just introduced himself. Oh, hi, America. I'm America's commercial actor, Scott Parkin. And today, I'm auditioning for a type of pizza that has bacon stuffed inside the crust and inside the bacon. <laughs> That's what I do as a commercial actor. I help Americans decide what type of food they might want for their mouths. This is America. We have a lot of food. Sometimes, sometimes, it's confusing. That's where you need a commercial actor like me to help you wade through it, to find a path, to find out what's good. I might say something like, you'll love our mesquite grilled, wild caught Copper River salmon covered in melted Asiago cheese with farm-raised pork chops wrapped in thick-cut applewood bacon, slow-cooked with Alaskan deep-water halibut, smothered in caramelized Maui onions, topped with a three-pound bone-in steel-cut ribeye steak, stuffed with stone-ground hand-rolled blue corn tortillas, each with a healthy 10-ounce chunk of mahi-mahi that's been marinating for weeks, nothing but pure Tennessee mountain moonshine, key limes, and fair trade cilantro. 
Top it off with a pre-prohibition artisan cocktail made from vanishing glacier water vodka infused with Central Valley hand-farmed blood oranges. You see, without me, the commercial actor, you wouldn't know what any of that food sounded like. In fact, without commercial actors, this country would likely starve in under three days. Yeah. And if that happens, well, let's just make sure that doesn't happen, okay? Think about that the next time you're eating a plate of food that would feed a family of five in another country. You're welcome, America. Commercial actors, we're important. And remember, we're doing great already, America. So get out there and buy something, won't we? There's the lady walking. <laughs> All right, let's welcome to Voice Over Body Shop, Scott Perkins. Thank you, thank you. Woo! Scott. Cheers. I like that. My, my lovely, my lovely daughter Miranda, who just turned 19 last week, is here on the couch in the audience here. So it's great to have a studio audience. Next, hey, woo! Hey, party. Hey. She's All the right. one on the right. Wow. Yeah, great having you back here, dude. It's great to be here. It's a, there are very few reasons I drive to the friggin' valley from Venice at. Four in the yeah. afternoon. It's like, well, hey, I'm supposed to get a root canal or be dragged behind a, a vehicle by my teeth. No, no, you you leave at noon. You have lunch here. Yeah, yeah, it makes it a lot did, easier. We did. Actually, oh, okay. we went to Glendale, went shopping. Oh, it's the last Galleria. Great. I'm sad of the death of the mall. I'm sad about the death of the mall. Yeah, but you go through the mall and it's you like, know? I don't need any of this stuff. I disagree. I need I, all of it, and I want to walk around. <laughs> One, I of was, my, one of my childhood malls is one of those dead malls. Yeah, it's and it's so Run scary. You, you, yep. you walk into the Westfield Mall in, in, um, on uh, Pico there, and it's like, oh, yeah, Injun wow. Joe, Becky. It's, it's like a horrible <laughs> cavern. It's, it's scary. <laughs> Where's the orange Joe? I, I just want to go to Mrs. Field. <laughs> but, you know, we also <laughs> order stuff from Amazon every week, so we killed the malls. All yeah, right, we'll we, be back. We did. All right, absolutely. Sorry, go ahead. I had the pleasure. My wife and I do a lot of binge watching. Mm. And we've been watching Grace and Frankie and there's this oh, one there, scene yeah. where you're you're <laughs> you're you're the guy at the at the crab store That's or at, right. the, at the buffet. The and zipper busters buffet. Yeah, yes, I, yes. Zipper snappers, yeah. I thought that and, was a and great I'm like, name. Hey, there's writers. Scott Parkin. I love yes. it. That's the great thing about being here in LA and having friends in the business that do that and it's like, hey, I recognize that person. It was and, it was say you blink and you miss me, but it was the couple of the best, most fun days I've had in uh in show business. Tell, tell us, how did you get that? Role? I have a, I have a good on-camera theatrical agent, Linda McAllister in Dallas, Texas. Excuse me, Waxahachie, Texas, and Los Angeles. Uh, and I, I read for the guy, and he, I improvised the entire audition, which had literally almost nothing to do with the actual line that eventually got there. But he liked how I did it, and well, he what hired What was me. the original line? I, uh, <laughs> I forget what the... I think the original line was something about, look, we're the buffets, we're running out of stuff, but uh, and we're all out of snow crab, but that's all that was written. And I improvised it, like, okay... You, you know whatever the hell I did, right? And he liked that, so um, yeah. I booked it. I got, I get to uh, my trailer was next to. Oh God, her name is Millicent. and she was in Alfie. She got Academy Award nomination for Alfie and a bunch of Disney movies. She's just a wonderful English actress, but she was so nice, yeah, so nice, yeah. And then to watch, um, I I had seen. Um, uh, Lily Tomlin the year before in New York. I went up right before she did, yeah. and I one of my greatest moments of my life was I made Lily Tomlin laugh, and and so uh, and Bob Bergen is friends with her. So you're not supposed to talk to the the big the big stars. You don't yeah. you know you don't make eye contact. I'll tell you about that another time. The Jimmy <laughs> Dean commercial where I wasn't supposed to look at Mr. Dean. I mean the sausage guy, not James Dean. Um, <laughs> so I said Lily. I saw your speech last uh, at the VO Voice Arts Awards, and I was up before you. I had a stupid hat, and she goes, "Oh my gosh, it's great to see you! How is Bob?" And I was like, <gasps> "You know, I got Lily Tomlin's a, just a genius." Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a funny show, though. It's, it's great, a very funny show. Great watching. Very funny show. Great actors just go through their paces. And, and since yeah. I have a smart ass daughter, she wrote a she she's an artist. She drew a picture of me going, "Sorry, folks, we're all out of snow crab." Sorry to peg the meters, uh, and someone <laughs> bought one. Somebody bought one, so now there's a picture of me with a zipper snappers hat on there. So anyway, go ahead. I'm Very sorry. cool. No, no, no. I, I wanted, I wanted right. to talk about that because oh, I think it's I think it's important that he's you know, not even on the show. He's like a blogging. He's got a whole that's, other that's thing. That's his on. job. It's so two amazing. Jobs. He's, he's at least two. The he's, multitasking is freaking phenomenal. He's here. in charge of engineering. I'm in ah. charge of creative. Okay, it's the way the way we work things here. I got you. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> I am. <laughs> I, I think that calls for another yeah, sip. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 
we uh, we had a, a mystery this science good juice. We had a mystery science theater night for Miranda's birthday, ah. and we watched the Wild Women of Wongo. Oh, and uh, it's a horrible, horrible movie shot in Orlando in like 1955. And they <laughs> the mystery could, science theater 2000. Well, that's yeah, a, well, yeah, it was, yeah. we, we just all everyone just yells back at the screen. Yeah, and. Um, uh, Vanessa Richardson was there and when we started going because we realized that they kept filling they're like look we got another hour to fill this out before we could sell it so they kept showing this parrot so every time they'd show the parrot everyone had to drink oh, no. <laughs> and Vanessa got to the table and she goes I did what they said and drank every time the, they showed the parrot and now I'm wasted <laughs> she wasn't but anyway oh okay so so now you're you're doing a lot more coaching lately I, I've, I see you out I there and, and, and teach you what's the focus of your teaching I mean are you teaching on screen stuff or, uh, you know, I teach. Or, 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 I teach at Gray Studios. I teach on-screen commercial acting for kids, um, teaching America's children how to sell blood thickener and <laughs> cheese because that's what we need to make America great again. Yes. Not like we're not already great right now. <laughs> um, so I do that, and then I teach. I teach. I Skype teach a bunch. And then I'm traveling to Spain with Jay Michael. I'm going to Spain. Oh. Really excited about that. Going first class on the... the yeah, the guy's <laughs> like a travel wizard. He's like Gandalf of the sky. He knows every... Oh, that's uh, that one doesn't leave for another 30 minutes. It, it's a flight 12 months away out of Portugal. Yeah, I know the whole schedule. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. And... Um, uh, not going to it, and I wasn't invited to Atlanta. So, so you see a bunch of people walking around at, uh, at VO Atlanta around midnight with nowhere to go because there's no room with a bar in it like mine. You know, that, that's no okay. one to blame but yourself. Neither were we. Oh, you're not going either? No, no. Oh, okay. So we'll just hang out you know, here and get drunk it's, here. It's I'd... probably a good idea. I think I was nearly asked to leave from the hotel <laughs> last time, so. Yeah, well, there, you have there, 130 there, people in one of those rooms. Yes, yeah, there, there was the incident at the Ruby Tuesdays. Yes, there. that was. Yeah. <laughs> They're still talking about that, right? Yes. Yeah, that they is. didn't sue though, so you're fine. That, that's true. That's yeah. true. But what a crowd that was. That was a fun one. That was that was, that was a, a lot of. One. I guess we would call them Hollywood A-lister voice people. Yes. Yes. Yes, we're B list in the in Hollywood, but A list. Uh, yeah, it was a great world. group. So uh, what I'm coaching now is um, I'll t I, I did want to talk about a couple of things. Yeah. Um, I've been doing a bunch of coaching in with larger groups, and something I notice is that improvisation. When it, when the script says improvisation, uh, what do you think of? Um, I usually think making stuff up. up. Yeah, it's like right. That's what it is, but not. It doesn't inherently have to be hilarious. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I think, from what I'm listening to, I did a thing with the VO Collective and I heard a lot, a lot, a lot of takes of a couple scripts. Yeah. And what I noticed is that people think they have to do all the heavy lifting. They have to make it a character voice or make it very funny or, mm -hmm. or you know, do the stuff that they've paid, you know, half a million dollars to have an ad agency do. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that, friends. They've got people that do that. And they've worked really hard on it for several months and have been beaten up in order to get their stuff in there. So they don't want wholesale changes of the script right. where you're writing, you know, a whole new character and he's got a puppet with him and <laughs> he can't do that stuff. So, yeah. um, so when it says conversational and it says uh, make it your own. You know, it doesn't say, looking for comedy, send your comedy guys. Just be you. Improv right. They're looking for conversational, but they say it's okay to improvise a bit. I suggest improvising three to five words tops and all words uh, laid in in a manner that support the conversational read. Um, rather than changing one puppet to an Australia. He's a puppet. He's a good guy. a puppet. Yeah, it's a Brita commercial. There's probably right. no Aussies in it. But um, yeah, so keep it simple and don't don't overthink it. And remember that when they say real, they don't really mean real. They don't mean like, you know, it's people, reality. Yeah, people real. that talk, you know, like normal people talk. talk. Right. right. They don't Stumbling want that. The right. Rest, right. They want they want something that's not right now. You can get five of those for just eight dollars and it's gotta happen today. We lost our lease. We're horrible at this. They don't want the big, you know, that right. sort of thing. Um what and take want, is it know. appropriate to whip out those little colorations, those little embellishments? I would say if they say improvise and it's conversational, I would say the first take. Oh, if they tell but you. don't but don't go nuts. We're if, assuming they're telling you to improvise. Right. If they don't tell you to improvise, it's a good time to keep the improv in your pants. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep that yeah, in if, mind. If, I, if look, if they say, listen, we uh, stick to the script, I'm like, yes, sir, that's a great idea. I'll Take do that. that. Literally. Yeah. Which okay. the big dish of catfish, 
right? Mm-hmm. There's not mm-hmm. a lot of room to improv there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if you're gonna, if it's, if it says, look, we're looking for funny. We want, uh, we want you to make all those little things that they can't. They can't say in the union. They can't say improvise because that's like, hey, write this because you know. Right. So, yeah. but I, I don't mind if they do. I really don't. It's always been an edge for me. And the only time that bites you in the in the ass is when they take your improv and put it in the commercial without you delivering it. Uh, and that's happened in a couple uh, Super Bowl uh, spots over the last mm, mm, six or eight years. Yeah. But I, I still the 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 advantage I gain from throwing my stuff out there uh, is is be- is better than the than the oh well oh, shoot didn't get that spot right. it's gonna run once yeah well, Mark Mark Cashman was on last week and he mm-hmm. was saying that you know and one of his favorite lines is is it's not in stone the st- the copy's not in stone oh yeah yeah I mean <laughs> yeah I like that. Uh, it, how what do you is it the idea to just look at it and say how would i say this or just yeah. riff on top of I, it or i think so i think so it's it's it, you look for the area cuz i i <clears throat> i work with some of the best joke writers there are at cbs when i was on a tv show working and you learn really how to lay in a joke or or what fits with the character it has to track the other thing is if it's not your thing don't do that you you the risk to reward humor is really really difficult and you're likely going to offend somebody so you know what i mean Yo, absolutely. And if, if you're not offending anybody with live humor you're not doing it right so <laughs> but in in the corporate world you want to be very judicious with what you do you want you don't want to you wouldn't want to make fun of the product you wouldn't want to it's it's shocking how often i'll do a class where somebody says something overly sexually aggressive or too flirty or right. or you know like oh, I, I wouldn't use it it doesn't work for me i've gained 10 pounds you know you 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 want to be positive on the on the product right um and you don't want to editorialize too much and take over the spot unless they're saying look we don't know how to do this we uh you know this part that's why when i train i have i have open-ended things where the, there's an opening line and a closing line in the middle is gone right. so that's that's exciting yeah I, I guess the thing is is that people have fear around doing that it's like it's the very co- true the, the copy is there yeah and it's like, well, I don't want to, like you said, you don't want to offend anybody. You don't want to tell the writer how to do his job. Right. But how do you let go? How do you make those choices and do it like that? With years of training, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Being a smart ass from the age of six and yeah, trying to get well, a word in edgewise at the table. But I would say for somebody who wasn't raised like that, find the vibe of the spot and make sure what you're laying in there tracks with the vibe. Right. They're all characters. I mean, everything you're doing is a character. Um, if I start doing a character like that, I do it freaking have to ask what I might say. It just comes out that way. Once you're in, you're locked in, you're locked in. Um, and they're all like that. Um, make sure it tracks. Make sure it goes, fits the vibe of what of what they're trying to do. You know, and don't don't step way out. Don't don't take any like great. We have to look risk to reward. Right. If you try and make a really excellent joke and you and and you make it, you get a little credit. Right. They're like, oh, that's funny. If you try and make an excellent joke and the percentage that you're going to piss somebody off is much higher. So you're risking a lot more by trying to write something super funny. But if it's character work and it fits, it fits the end of it right. and it's and it's quick and it's non-offensive, more power to you. Lay it in there. I, I, especially on the second take if they say why right. if they say improvisers make it your own stretch out ignore all that shit i said about the first one and <laughs> do that on the second one because you can they are looking for you to stretch out they're looking for support and 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 here's another little secret having been on the other side on the advertising side very often a client will use or an ad advertising agency will use the actors to try and get comedy through the net of lawyers and uh non-creative garb uh people right so what you it's very difficult right and so they may go okay and then they'll say that and then when they hear it they're able to go oh i and they won't go oh ad agency i get what you were saying they'll go oh that guy's funny and they'll go mm-hmm. yeah he's good let's get him right so they'll do that in order to try and sell in more comedy and more entertainment there's a hell of a lot of comedy in uh radio and tv advertising right now it's it's good news yeah Good keep news. it coming, keep it coming. Keep it coming, baby. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Scott Parkin, and we're talking about improv and doing commercial copy and those sorts of things. 
A lot of people, again, if you have a question, throw it in the chat room. And we I also think, have the Zoom link posted in the chat. Ah, oh, so wow. Actually, if you want to actually ask a question. We can on, oh, Zoom. oh, 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 wow. Actually hear the people. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's, it's so they'll like, get so they'll get some exposure, too. Hey, yeah. that le- that number's right at the bottom of the phone. Dial the temp, the time, and we'll be ready to give away some T-shirts and some bumper stickers later on. That's right. 11 years of radio. How long did you do radio? 15. <laughs> It shows. <laughs> I say 15. Let's see. All right. What's it? Where's the card? What does the card yeah. say? Yeah. The anyway. cart. <laughs> no, the card. The oh, cart. Oh, the, oh, cart oh. Was, the cart was the old eight tracks. They yes. used to, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, they weren't. They were two track, but they were. I'm not same good design. with math. I, I wasn't I was either. the talking guy. Yeah. I talked. I, I thought in base 60. It's like, all right, it's going to come up to the top yeah. of the tank. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually. Uh, again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room. Uh, and it might, if you want to ask on Zoom, that's great too. Now, a lot of people. You know, th- trying to get into commercials is one thing. That's that's a tough nut to try and crack. It you know, is. Unless you're trying to do it locally or something like that. I mean, here in L.A., it's you've really got to really push and it. And then to make a living at it is good. Good tougher. luck with that. Yeah. You kids have fun now. Most people are really, you know, who are really succeeding at voiceover are doing a lot of the corporate work, the e-learning work, mm-hmm. uh, which is somewhat tightly scripted. How can you relax around that type of stuff? I mean, I know what I do to do it because I... Because I'm a teacher, but yeah, uh, but it, uh, what's you know, a good way to relax around that copy and not? You tick know off what, buddy? I'll, I'll be real honest with you. I haven't really got much into the e-learning stuff. Yeah. Miranda did a bunch for uh, Jen Henry. I did some of it. There isn't. There's not a lot of room to play, especially if it's an English as a second language uh, sort of thing, or or they're translating. Right. Uh, it's it's very. It, you have to real. It's very idiosyncratic. You're working with a director that will say, hey, stretch out there. To, you know, press five to move to slide four. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> okay, let me try it again. Press five, and then here's the thing you should do. Do what I do. Press, you know, there's right. just not yeah. that much leeway. Not a lot of room. Right. But yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something, that what you hit on, which is you have to hit it from every direction you can, especially if you're going to try and make a living at it. Right. You have to have, you have to try narration. You have to do promo. You have to try and do, you have to try and do all of it as hard as you can. Um, and I train, like I train, I train with Tom Pinto for narration. I've always wanted good, to do that good place to go. I used to just, it used to just fall. I did a thing called the uh, making the making the band. And then I did radical sabbatical and they were all basically Steve left his job. He wanted to be a poker player. So now he's being a poker player. His wife isn't thrilled about it, you know, and then it's a, you know, it's that kind of thing. And, but I've loved narration since I was a kid. My old man was a really deep voice stockbroker who wanted to be in radio, <laughs> but um, you do need to hit it from every angle you can. And there's a very cool new way to do that. Uh, the VO road show is something, it was Mary Lynn's concept, but she got together all the coaches Basically, everyone that was at Ruby Tuesday. <laughs> so, Sissy, Dave Fenoy, uh, Jeff Howell, Tom Pinto, myself, and Mary Lynn. And so, they'll go into a town, um, animation, promo, commercial. Commercial, uh, narration, right. animate, you know, that thing. And then, we'll be there for a day, and we'll just go at it super hard. And it, So, it's it's a very good thing. We're, I guess the next one is Boston. Maybe Boston and New York. It's going to be an East Coast swing. And then I'm in Portland after that. But it's a very cool way that you can try and you got to expand your skill set. You got to have more arrows in the quiver. It's my little metaphor. Yeah. It's about, it's about archery. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, right. <laughs> so I think, I think it's important to diversify and listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get the, in a time when people smelled, in a place that no one heard of. I'm not going to get that. I don't have 18 testicles, and there's guys that already do that. So that's not going to happen for me. So I did, you know, so I can do, if I did a trailer, it would be, you know, Steve's been married a long time. (laughs) Not anymore. Now he's single, and he's got a dog. Or, you know, I'd be that kind of guy. So I'm not going to bark up the wrong tree. I'm not saying try everything and see what sticks. Look at what's out there. Find where your voice works and see if you can pull that off and see if you can find a coach or someone that's training. Train with reputable people. Something else I want to talk about. Oh, and go I will, for it. I will pepper spray. A, uh, I'm telling you, I'm really, really concerned about the amount of slime that's edging into our industry and the amount of Facebook post calls. Make a million dollars in voiceover. Just sign up for my 25-year course. I, I'm, I just go, I, I'm, you know. 
You know me. I'm yeah. I'm not terribly. You're bright. not going to hold a, back. I'm a I'm yeah. a bit of a loose cannon, aren't I? <laughs> so I just I'm really concerned about that because it gives guys and and women who coach and have dedicated their whole life and are, and work and are in. It gives us a bad name when they take people's money like that. I don't like it. It's not. It's uh, really unfortunate. I think it's it's up to all of us who are already here who are standing on the backs of the people like Marilyn Wisner, who started uh, is a giant in this industry and started the coaching thing. Um, one of the people that started it. I think it's unfair to not police this. So beware, buyer beware. Ask your coach. Who have you coached? What have they booked? Um, how long have they been in the industry? Get a couple of references because it's not, I mean, it's not a huge thing at this point. I mean, have you guys... You guys have seen it. You know what I'm talking about, oh, well, right? Well, we're, we're coaches. We're, yeah. We're, we're helping. Okay. So you know, so you see how this begins to slide where I, I heard a coach that said, oh no, you need to take, uh, you need to have two other jobs and you need to sign up with me for a, a four week coach course. And your voice is not good. Ooh. I yeah. mean, I just, and I know this girl and her voice is really good and she's already working. So that kind of shit just drives me batty. Um, yeah, so yeah. be on the lookout for that. I'm sorry about the cussing. Am I not? I don't think I'm allowed to cuss, am I? No, we really don't give a okay, shit. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> oh, good. Now, I can brought the bell in case. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, we got lots more to talk about with Scott Parkin, and we're going to take a quick break here. Again, if you've got a question, All right. throw it in the chat room, and if you want to ask him on Zoom, so like actually be on the oh, show. Oh, that's true. You can do that. And for the younger people, my daughter's here. We're going to talk a about that. Voiceover actor and an artist. If you have a question for her, keep it to yourself. She's really shifty. All and right. tired. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I did, didn't want to talk about it. That's why I told you to bring it. No, no, all right. All right. No, you're good. Anyway, we'll be right back here on Voice Everybody Shop with Scott Parkin. <laughs> Don't go away. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. What question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's, how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take vo to gos free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right, it's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need, all in one single comprehensive online class taught by vo to go David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Go to GettingStartedInVO.com. That's GettingStartedInVO.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves, but I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. VOBS is still on? Serious? Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected 
respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Oh. Are we back? Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Did you Just because the computer right? yeah. freezes ah, that's funny. doesn't mean we have to. The computer? <laughs> yeah, we were doing the, you know, the, the police force thing mm-hmm. there. We were just talking about I love that. police squad. Uh, police squad. That yeah. was right. Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen, the Abrams brothers. Ah, great stuff. Anyway, we're with Scott Parkin. And uh, again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. One of the things I know you're really proud of, and I got the chance to actually see her in action, is your lovely daughter, Miranda. That's true. I'm terrible. Uh, I don't have a lot else going. So, I, yeah. It's pretty you, much. Go, you go with what works. Yeah. You know, yeah. as long as it's happening. Well, you know, you. I was hoping for so much more, but you get what you get and you don't get upset, right? I'm right. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Oh, sweetheart. she's in the room. <laughs> I'm you might right want to. Here. Yeah, uh, but I, I had the pleasure when we were I was over at uh, we were over at uh, uh, Soundbox LA and oh yeah 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 and uh, was, oh yeah we came in for that came thing. and I was yeah. having lunch with with Tim and and she came in and you guys did a session I guess it was in England. She's yeah, very, that, uh, very the, talented the, the young real, lady. Real page thing back to England. Get the camera on her, Sue. So oh okay, there she is. Right, Smile, she's, darling. She's, make she's everyone right say hello. She can do some great faces. Do yeah. your ugliest face. <laughs> that, that's that my works. favorite yeah it's a family resemblance yes yeah I, he can do it too yeah there I, it is there it is clearly the apple no, no, fall too the far from the tree there, there. Yeah. yeah um how she does did, she, how did she get into it and i mean i i know she's a she great artist no too choice. Yes. she had no choice how did she get into voiceover yeah she was reading at icm when she was she read very early she's smart uh and was reading really early, had a big vocabulary. So she, Jeff, Jeff Danis put on her script when she was four and she booked it. It was a Sea World commercial. And then she booked a direct to DVD thing. And then there was another party involved that said she couldn't do that. So then we stopped and then now we can. So, um, so now she's going in a lot. She's reading a lot of animation copy. She just finished, she did ADR. I think I can say that, right? Can I say that, Em? Yeah, it's out. Okay. Uh, for uh, Escape Room. Oh, and it cool. was really damn good. It was a really fun popcorn movie, and she did some ADR, which is a voice match for the lead. And I had her like tap me when you know, and I didn't know it was her. There was one time when they're in the upside down uh, bar that I could recognize her voice, but otherwise I couldn't. So oh, she's got a fantastic. really, she has a really good ear. Yeah. Um, wow. So like, yeah. like per- <laughs> she has perfect pitch. Her choir director <laughs> said she has perfect pitch, and I was like, she hates baseball. Uh, but so that helps her with impressions, re- and 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 ma- voice matching. Really, uh, it's a frightening thing. I, I'm I'm okay at it, but her Australian at this point, her Australian is much better than mine, isn't it, darling? Yes. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So th- I mean, that's that's how she. I mean, she's been raised around it. She was raised on on set at CBS for a couple of years because the show was about my life as a single dating dad, and there was a girl, Catherine Newton, who's now on Supernatural and everywhere. What else is she in? Lady Bird. Lady, yeah, she's in Lady Bird. Yeah, so she was play, basically playing Miranda. So she was raised in that in that environment, and it was you know this is not. Um, Liza Minnelli <laughs> raised around a piano with Fred Astaire and Gene yeah. Kelly, but it's a Billy West and Maurice LaMarche and Tara and Lori Allen and you know folks like that. Um, so you know, so so she's she's been around it her whole life, and comedy's you know valued in our home. So oh, I, I, I isn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me ask you, what was it like growing up oh, with, yeah. around this guy? Oh, I mean, it was horrible. <laughs> that's my girl. There it is. All um, the all the legal stuff's out of the way, sweetheart. You can say what you want. <laughs> He sucks. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. My dad's great. He exposed me to a lot of culture and and stuff and mu- music, music, movies, all the stuff that he grew up with. So I grew up listening to the things that he grew up listening to, and I feel like that's really affected my taste in music uh, and and movies as well. My that's dad true. and I both share a big passion for uh, sci-fi movies and sci-fi TV shows and uh, crime dramas and yeah, we're watching Ozark. We're watching right. Ozark. Oh right my now. god, do Ruth. Oh. Is that Ruth. good? Marty? 
I wouldn't trust Marty Bird with my life. <laughs> it is really, really good. No, and I, great. and I, I, at first I was like, I, you know, I don't. We were late to it because it's already got two seasons and we're almost done. But it uh-huh. is, it is excellent writing. It's kind of Breaking Bad, Sopranos ish, yeah, family Narcos-ish. crime. Yeah, it's really solid. Really cool. good. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing the, the, to see great writing on the screen. You know, the, where it's. Like, I, I, I'm gonna say it. TV is kicking movies ass right now. Oh, absolutely. I think t- television is where some of like uh, we were taking chances. That's why. Yeah, that's right. And they can do it in ten episodes too. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, right. it's. I mean, but still, I think film should be doing better than it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what the, what's really exciting about watching stuff with Miranda is you can see her. Her brain tick, and when she locks in on a frame or something, I'm like, oh, she's gonna draw that. Like she drew this from my favorite um, scene in Fantastic Mr. Fox. Oh yes, that final <laughs> that. Give me some Hobbit killing movie music. <laughs> I have a phobia of wolves. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Canis Lupus! Canis Lupus! Fulpus Fulpus! <laughs> so she drew this for me, and we throw it up on T Public on her site, and I had a shirt made. So cool. That was, that was my Father's Day. So all right. Yeah, it's very cool. You're She's, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nicely done. Wow. Uh, we got uh, a, got a couple of questions from our oh, audience, cool. Mr. Woodham. Those people. We do actually. One of them is from Thomas Mackin or Machen, Machen. as he likes Tom to call himself, Machen. instead right. of the way I say it. Yeah. He thinks he knows how to say his last name. I think we should. Uh, we're going with how you say it. <laughs> let's see. Do we have Thomas? Is he live? He is. Hello. Is the caller there? Yeah. <laughs> Indiana, you're on the air. Caller, okay. You're there, man. We got you live. Dude, you yeah. look so much like a murderer right now. You look like you're like, I just want to say, are, is Scott going to be at his house? Because oh, I want to take him out. You've got that finger pyramid of evil intention going on there. He did. He did. Yeah. Yes, excellent. Go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, since you do a lot of coaching and stuff throughout the, uh, the country, how often do you actually come through the Midwest and have classes? Um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm in Dallas. I'm coming to Dallas. That's not Midwest. That's Southwest. But nothing planned in the Midwest. But I'll, I'll, I mean, if you if you check on the um, the VO Roadshow uh, website, you can say, hey, can you please come here? And if you get a couple of people that say, yeah, we'd love to have you come, then we'll come. But uh, mid, I mean, I would do Chicago in a heartbeat. You, you know what these people in Boston did? Um, I can't, the, the escapes uh, the the family the singing oh the Amadors the Amadors the Amador the lovely Amadors <laughs> had them Trump on our show yes, yes they're the Von Tra- they're they're the <laughs> Latino Von Trapps <laughs> <laughs> they're amazing and all musicians we ended up at some Brazilian party with everybody that walked in had an instrument it was amazing but she just got a bunch of people together in Boston and said hey we'd like you to come out so I'm I'm down for that <laughs> as well does that does that answer your question. Sure does. All right. Okay, kill. Go kill something. <laughs> <laughs> Did it look like that with the blue light? <laughs> I just want to say this TV station better start talking about things I like. <laughs> right? <laughs> but I'm, he's a lovely man, I'm sure. He is. I'm sure there's nice Fortunately, people as well. he's all the way out in the in Midwest. West, yeah. 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 It's going to take him a couple of days to get here in a Chevelle. Right? <laughs> I'm guessing. I don't want to. Or a Gran Torino. Right. Gran Torino. Galaxy a, a 68 a Galaxy. A yeah. Corvair. Let's be honest. It's a Gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> a 1974 Gremlin with lime green with wide tires. You got oh, another question? I'm looking to see. We had somebody else who was there, then gone, then there, that then gone. That happens a lot. That's uh, all right. Brandon. Thank you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was there for a lot of it. I was present for half of your childhood. Wow. God, she is quick. <laughs> I know it's frightening. It clearly, it it's really genetic. is frightening. It uh, kicks your ass. It really. You teach them everything, and then they just rip you to shreds. Get this from him. All right. <laughs> it's an we, online course. We have Alyssa sure. or Lisa. All right, Graham, uh, and then she's gone, and then we have Karen O'Brien. Every time I look All at right. the list, there's a new name. They get frightened. Karen. I'm a giant. Uh, K- Karen's not afraid gone. of anything. You are on the air. If you've got a mic working, I think she's probably getting the mic working right now. This they, is exciting. This we'll gives you a chance to look at the carpeting they have here yes it's fabulous i love what you've done with it it's very grateful dead type. it is there bro she is. It is, man. <laughs> hey, hey, bob weir's back out this there she too. is all right cool hi karen they're just tuning in it's working oh, cool. welcome, welcome aboard how's it going tonight are you holding up a lighter for a concert <laughs> oh no <laughs> no hi no, karen what's your question straight george's cool little slider right 
<laughs> I've always thought George was a cool slider. <laughs> there we go. All right. Do you have a, do you have a question, Dalton? Oh, is she gone? She's no, no, no. Oh, she was using the little oh, no, camera no, card. You got cover. a white phone? Am I not supposed to be in this room? Do you have I a star filter? Star Wars. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Did you have a question? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> Great. <laughs> really? You I saw a link, and I'm like, oh, good, a link. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Well, what? that's the kind of go-getter audience yes. that we love to I love have it. There's here. nothing you can tell. All right. It was really nice to see you. <laughs> Don't let the last guy kill you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think the filter that you guys run before a guest can get on here is... <laughs> It's excellent. It's tight. It's tight. Tight run ship here. We don't. Nothing gets through these guys. Yeah. <laughs> we, have a, we have a seven year delay. That's the problem. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. We have nobody it's, on the it's show. 1995 here, but the folks have great questions. Um, I think what she was probably going to ask. Happy New Year, 2004. <laughs> <laughs> was what's with this? What's with this George Bush? No. Um. I owe you a surfing lesson. Yes, you, you do. You won the thing for the VO Collective. Oh, God. Shout out to the VO Collective, yo. Yay! Yay! Shout out, VOC. Um, uh, VOC, yeah, you know me. Um, we won a voiceover thing. And, yes. And did you did you have a good time when we did we did, oh, it was uh, we great. did a coaching thing? It's I, interesting I, I, to coach somebody who's already working and knows a lot of stuff. Yeah, so. no, it was it was great. But the surfing lesson, you I'm going to wait, wait for the water to warm up a bit. You've said that and for three years. And it's not shark season. You said that for three years now. <laughs> it, every year it gets years, warmer. I know, I know, I know. But yeah, I'd love you to come down. I'd love to get you up on a board. I, as I promised, I'll get you up long enough. To get a profile picture. Okay. And excellent. that's really all that matters anymore, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. So what are you working on right now? Uh, I just... That you can talk about. Uh, I did a lovely Comcast commercial, and I can talk about that. It was really fun. I did another commercial with a director who uh, did Bad Grandpa. It was one of my favorite movies and all the Jackass movies. I can't. Thanks for admitting that, by the oh, way. I love, I, Bad I Grandpa is a great Thank movie. Thank you for Come admitting on. that. I, I have, I, my, my stupid enlarged heart is on my sleeve. I have, I'm, a, I'm an open book. It's a pop up <laughs> book and it's old and it's folded. But the point is, um, he, he's a great director and I can't say who was the, the star that was in it. Uh, but it, Brian but it was really good. Ferris. No, I can't. Yeah, it was really good. It was really funny. It's going to come out. It is for Klondike, and I can say that. So that's coming out. I did. Uh, I have some. I have some Snapple spots. Thank God, this year's last year was a weird one, yeah. voiceover wise. But this year it's kicking right off the bat. Good. So we're very happy. So we have food, and I was able to buy beer, and I even got a bell from Amazon. <laughs> um. So, uh, Snapple. Two spots for Snapple that should start hitting the airwaves really soon. They're very funny. Dave Layden is an incredibly good commercial actor. He just won an Emmy last year uh, for his Super Bowl spot. No, wait, these are VO or on but camera? One, one of them is on, two of them are on camera. One of them is VO. Snapple is VO. Okay. Which is really wild because I booked the spot as an on camera guy and they cut me out as the doctor from the on camera spot. I was like, oh, oh boy, you really needed that food yeah <laughs> but, um, <laughs> then they're like yeah. we really liked your voice so we'd like to have you do that. i was like oh god it pays the same <laughs> yes oh, i mean yeah hallelujah. let me check my sky oh, yes yes so and then they called me back again which was just fabulous so awesome. that's when that work begets work begets work so yeah anytime you get a gig way. try and leverage that shit for whatever else you <laughs> yeah. pull out of it right well, well there you go leave us with one piece of wisdom for uh, our, our voice, yes. For our, our... <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to have a pro, used to have a great program director in Dallas, and he go it was a morning show, and he's like, "Hey, you guys, get on in there and have a blast, or you're fired." <laughs> so, and then we used to say, "If I can make if I can make one person laugh this morning, yeah. they're going to replace us by Tuesday. There's no way it's going to last." <laughs> I guess um, one thing about the conversational read and improv: be a student of the world. Listen to voices, listens to accents, listen to stuff. That's where Miranda got it. Um, uh, when we went to England and Scotland, by the time she left, she had every different region dialed. Characters, little stuff like your neighbor. This is how my neighbor sounds. Brandon, bring in the garbage cans. Never going to be able to use that in a spot, but I might use it as a starting point. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not like if you think of... Um, um, not Dan Castaneda. Um, da, da, I got him. Uh, 
Yeah, he, uh, he does Mo. Yeah, yeah, Flaming Mo. Come on, what's his name? Oh, um. Oh my God! One of the greatest voice actors. Uh, Hank Azaria. Hank Azaria. Yeah, Twenty points. You. Holy Cross! You control the big exploded. board. Now on the Green Hornet, who played Cato? Uh, it was Bruce Lee. Twenty points. All right. So, uh, he said, um, Edward, uh, like uh, Chief Chief Wiggum is. Ha ha ha! a good boy. Yeah. He says it's a crappy Edward G. Robinson. And if you think of Frank, it's like, uh, well, actually, the death ray is used for evil purposes. Right. It's a bad Jerry Lewis. And he says right. he starts all of those that way. So collect stuff. Be astute. Don't, when you talk to somebody at a drive through listen to what they say. Find starting points and, and little conglomerations and mash them all together and come up with different characters. They don't have to be outlandish animation characters. You can use those in a commercial read. Remember, they're all characters. Some of the characters are going to be closer to who you are. Some of them are going to be way out there. So, Is it okay to record Perfect Strangers? Yeah. I don't yeah. mean the show from the 80s. I you mean, mean <laughs> I, I mean, mean your iPhone. Belky, I told you <laughs> that Eastern European Nanda is the script. Yeah. Uh, sure, as long as they know it. Okay. <laughs> do you mind if I rec record That's... your accent, sir? Because yeah. I want to file it away. I'll tell you what I do. What I will I do, never use it for anything. I, I listen as That's hard fine. as I can. I had a cab driver who was a Nigerian guy, and I love soccer. Played soccer my whole life, and I followed Nigeria through the World Cup. And I asked him, I said, uh, did you play? He goes, I will play ever since I was a small boy. And it's just like, I was like, oh my God, tell me more. He's like, we will play. And the guy, he brought a witch doctor. I was like, what? He goes, he brought the witch doctor. I said, well, what do you do? He goes, he brought the turtle. I'm like, what do you mean he brought a turtle? He brought the turtle. What for? He goes, he put on the ground and make walk and he dance. I said, well, what happened to you guys? It made us slow. <laughs> <laughs> it was slow all day long. We can't run anywhere. So collect everything you possibly can. Listen, if you want to tape them, if you want to tape them, great. I just think you're going to get into trouble then. Hey, do you mind if I tape you? Because of, I don't know, I guess your accent. It's so amazing. Don't say it like that. I think you'll no, be all right. You go. Scott, no, I, it is always dude, a pleasure. Thanks for having me up. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. VO Roadshow. Have a good time in Atlanta. Um, you can find me on Facebook. I have a, a page called America's Commercial Actor Scott Parkin. My daughter, Miranda Parkin, you can find her on Instagram. On the couch. At, on the couch. <laughs> yeah. Always. Yeah. <laughs> and your Instagram is? Parkin Art. Oh, that's catchy. My last name and art at the end. That's clever. Do cool. you write that yourself? No. Okay. Uh, and what about your review channel? Oh, it's same thing. Parkin Art on YouTube. I just did a review on 2D DreamWorks movies. It's a wonderful review. And it's I very like funny. El Dorado. I love cool. El Dorado. Yep. Excellent. Beautiful. Thanks for having me on. Oh, I love what you've done with the place. Always a thrill. Do I dive out now or do you guys beat no, me or do you pepper spray you, me? What you, happens? You can sit there. All right. Go just to for a fix. Yeah, that's we'll right. Be the serial killer. All right. All right. Well, we'll be right back. Uh, we got more stuff to talk about. So don't go away here on Voice Over Body Show. Hey, nice transition. Thank you. Well, this is the point in the show where I have to talk about Source Elements because they're one of our wonderful sponsors and they make some really cool stuff, primarily Source Connect. That's the tool for voice actors that need to be able to record from their studio to other studios all around the globe. And they've got support as well all around the globe. So chances are if you're logged on to Source Connect, one beautiful thing about them is they have live support technicians available to you because they're multinational. I mean, their headquarters is in Chicago, but also in New Zealand. So they cross time zones and they got you covered no matter where you are. So go check out Source Connect right now. And the way you do that is you go to source-elements.com. It can get a 15-day free trial. You can get Source Connect Standard, the version that you should be using as voiceover actors these days. Get Source Connect Standard demo for 15 days right away and start using it. Get accustomed to it. Learn how to use the iLock. Get the license set up. Get your system rocking and rolling. And then that day that a session comes along and they want you on Source Connect, you're ready to pull the trigger. You're ready to go. You don't even have to buy it that day. You can do it as a demo. Keep it for a few months. For the day you need it, you can pay for it. It's great. So if you want to give them a try, you know where to go, source-elements.com, and tell them we sent you. Thanks so much for your support. And we'll be right back with more Tech Talk right after this. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? 
go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, look at that. There's VoiceOver Essentials company mascot, Lila the Dog, sunbathing on Turtle Beach in front of a Porta Booth Pro on spring break with her spiffy free VO, as heard on TV baseball cap. Yep, VOBS viewers only can get their famous VoiceOver cap, which is a 1995 value, free when they order their Porta Booth Pro. Never miss a session or audition, even while taking a well-deserved spring break. You can just add the Porta Booth Pro and the VoiceOver baseball cap in your cart and then put the promo code PBPROCAP in the promo code field and click the Submit Promo Code button to get their discount for the cap. Both items are on the homepage. The Porta Booth is at the top and the cap near the bottom of the page. All you have to do is go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Just go down to the bottom of our homepage. You'll find it there and order your Porta Booth Pro now and get your free baseball cap. Thanks, Harlan. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. Back. To say goodbye. Yes, we are. Uh, next week on this show, well, in two weeks, on the 18th, right. Kiff Vandenhoeven will be here. Oh, cool. Another one of those guys who I see, you're watching TV and it's like, oh, there's Kiff. TVs and movies. Yeah. He, he plays cops. Yes. He just happens to get, he has that I look like a cop kind of guy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but he does a lot more than that. You right. To find out and he does voiceover, to. and he was doing his voiceover podcast, too. So we'll mm -hmm. be talking to him about that. Super cool, nice guy. Oh, yeah. Um, who are our donors of the week? I've noticed many, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, let's go Let's go take a dab in the donor's box. And this is where we should have the donor's music that I can play to kill time while I go look up the dun, donor. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, we, dun, have dun, dun, dun. we have donors. We have donors. We have lots dun, dun, and dun, lots dun, of donors. Uh, Michael Kennedy. Thank thanks, you, Michael. Mike. We answered his question and he gave us some money. What a guy. Whoa, thanks a lot, brother. That was very generous of you. Um, Andrew Kaufman, he is one of our subscribers, sends money in uh, on a regular basis because he's subscribing using the subscribe function that PayPal has built in. Um, Philip Sapir, thank you. Um, keeping down the list. Uh, that's a sponsor, so that's even better. Uh, Sarah Borges, you can, anyway, anybody can sponsor, sponsor the show, yeah. by if the you, way. If there's you something you'd like to special. advertise to the voiceover community, we're here for yeah, you. We're here. Uh, Sarah Borges, uh, thank you. Uh, CJ Ringwall, thank you, CJ. Um, Michael Blanker. Oh, man, that's not Michael. I'm sorry. Michelle. Michelle. My apologies, Blanker. Michelle. I know Michelle. Michelle. Kill uh, <laughs> Antland Productions. And Graham Spicer, thanks, Graham. Brian Roush and Joseph Harrison. And man, there's a lot of names. I told you there was a lot Burns. this week. Holy smokes. Thank you so many. So many of you are helping to boost the show up a little bit with uh, Maria Mackis as well. All right. So, yeah, it's been wonderful. We really appreciate all these contributions. They just help us boost up the show a little bit more, fill in the gaps when we need gear and keep things up to date, software updates, all this stuff, and it really is helpful. So, which is why we look so damn good. <laughs> yes. No, anyway, that would probably be uh, yes. We'd like you to show us your booths. Uh, this is C.J. Ringwall's booth. I mean, let's see if we can. Yeah, there's his speaker. Yeah, we were thinking. Well, it looks like you know we just got moving blankets like behind us. Can I put my head on that? Yeah, went to the harbor freight, got moving blankets. They work right. There we go. There we got are. a good view of it. Okay. We can see everything that's in there. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, those those they do look like harbor freight blankets, don't they? Oh, definitely. Um, definitely, they work. They do. You have enough layers of those things, and They're... I think one thin layer of blanket isn't quite cutting it for most people. 
Double them up, though, and you're getting there. You'd and for the price, well. you can't beat that. <laughs> Crazy cheap. Absolutely. Nice job. Thanks for sending in your picture. We do yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, send them in to vobs.tv in landscape, not portrait. Okay. Um, again, if you want to talk to George and have him help you with your home studio, you go to... The Tech. George. GeorgeTheTech.com. <laughs> It doesn't matter with me. Uh, yeah, that's where you go to find me. And Dan is also available online for tech support over at... HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Yes. I'm there all the time. I just live in my studio. Mm. My wife comes in and says, you're never leaving here, are you? That's why we put the beer keg in here. That's right. Uh, okay. Well, uh, we're here on Alternate Mondays Live, but we're also doing Tech Talk. We're taking this segment, and we will replay this next week, The this amazing interview with... With Scott uh, Parkin will be mm -hmm. all this week, so mm -hmm. that that'll be really cool. Mm -hmm. Want to be in our studio like Gary is today? Let's get a shot of Gary here. That's Gary. There's His name Gary. Is Gary. Gary. They call him Gary. There's Gary, Gary in the corner there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all you have to do is write to us again at the guys at vobs .tv and tell us what when you're in town or when you can be here, and we'll give you the secret handshake and maybe give you the address. Maybe give you the right address. In and out order. That's right. Uh, okay, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. And VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. <laughs> VO to go, go VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All right. I'm Isn't working, that guy everywhere? I things? know. I'm working with him tomorrow. We're cutting a new announcer demo tomorrow. Oh, very That'll be great. Announcing. I hear it's coming back. That's why I'm doing a demo. That's the rumor. That's right. We're doing an announcer demo. And not ironically either. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'd like to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Webcasting. Also, our producer, Catherine Curden, for getting great guests for us like Scott Parkin and Kit Vanden Heuvel in two weeks. Uh, Mike Merlino wasn't in chat room duty. It was you and Sue were doing the chat room tonight. Yeah. Mike's exactly. doing more important things. <laughs> Like How dare he? Big, the big time stuff in Hollywood. <laughs> uh, and uh, also our amazing technical director who just was par excellence tonight, Sue Merlino. Yeah, Sue. Mike's mom. Mike's mom. Yeah. Let's so just anyway. change the credit. That's right. So that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We're here, well, it seems like every week, but you'll find us here on YouTube or on Facebook or all those other places. Podcasting. We're here. We're everywhere. Just type VOBS yeah, and you'll, you'll find us. You'll find us. Or some organization that's VOBS acronym. But anyway, Good luck that's going to do it for us this week. We know it's not an easy business, but we're here to help. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VOBS. Yes. Take care, everybody. Bye.